Hello and welcome. My name is Kim Fee and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the UK. Today I'd like to share with you a card. Um, it's my twist on a uh, baby step box card. Um, I'm, go mine's, I'm going to be calling mine a podium card because it's, it's more like a podium, um, an Olympic podium. First, second, third. This one I've made, um, it has got score lines in, so it, you could use it as a baby block with um, different squares. But this one, um, I've slightly changed the scoring, um, the measurements and such. So I'm going to show you how I made this one. I used the Peaceful bow, Bows, Bows stamp set. So this is from last year's Christmas offering that's been carried over to this year as well i absolutely love this this stamp set i've used it a lot i used it in my in-person weekend retreat last year um to which i may um sell the pdfs for the projects for that because you can still get this stamp set so what I've used also is the stag from the North Pole Wonder Dies. That's in this year's winter catalogue. So just him there. There's two there, that one that cuts out the stamp and stamp set and him on his own that cuts out this one here. I think it's quite elegant actually. So that's what we're going to use. I used um let's see early espresso gold mirror card and very vanilla early espresso ink pad and the green has come from the marker pens because i wanted to have bits showing of the branches even though it's sort of winter time i just wanted to have bits showing the branches and and different color greens there so i have used old olive early espresso and mossy meadow and i'll show you how to do that when we stamp in i've used second generation stamping as well as first and i've used um this bit here that's from the same set this bit here and versamark that and embossed in gold embossing this twine is absolutely beautiful. We had something like this um, a couple of years ago and I really did stock up on it because I loved it. I love the way that it curls. Well, we are doing it again this year. Um, I think it's slightly thinner and it comes in the Wonder of the Season ribbon combo pack. So it comes with this one here, which is shaded spruce. That's quite pretty as well. It's quite thick. It's nice for boxes and wrapping around boxes but we're using this one here so should we get started then now whilst i'm going to be making oh i'll show you the back as well so this is the back so whilst i'm i'm going to be sh making the card in the early espresso because it's so dark i'm not sure that you're going to see the scoring so i'm going to to score the vanilla so you will need two pieces. Let's move this out of the way. You will need two pieces that measure six and a half by eight. Two pieces make that box. Then you're going to need the mat and layering. So the gold mat is nine by five centimeters square. I'll try and um, work it out in inches. I'm sorry that it's inches and then centimetres, but that's just the way that it worked out. And I'll try and find out the best and put it down below. So all the measurements will be in the um, read more bit down below the video. So you'll want one of those. You'll want two, wisp, uh, two very vanilla in nine by nine square because you want it to mat on there and you want one for the back um, to write on. And then the other two will be 4.5 square. 
centimeter square in the gold mirror you will want two of those and you want two very vanilla at four by four centimeters square okay so if i put them to one side I'm going to show you how I made the podium. So here we go. Let's make sure that it's all in view for you. It's slightly off the table, so I'm going to be very careful. Okay, so we're going to start with first scoring on the long side. So for this one, um, I do have a Facebook Live making this one from um yesterday which what day are we today that was sunday sunday the fourth when we monday the fifth of october and it uses um in the score line there so this one we're going to be just doing two inches we're going to be scoring and we're going to take it over to six inches And we're going to put this one side for the minute because we're going to be doing the same again on the other piece because we're going to have a front and we're going to have a back. So I'm trying not to wobble too much. So that's, let's know that's straight. Two inches and six inches. Okay, then we're going to turn it around. And we're going to go one and a quarter inches, which is just about here. One and a quarter inches. Then we're going to go over to five and a quarter inches. And I'm going to do the same again for the other one. We, we're going to bring them both back in and do some more scoring, but we'll get these ones out of the way first. So that's one and a quarter. Oh, the ribbon's falling off. And five and a quarter. Okay. I'm not sure if you can see those score lines if I bring it up. Here, here, and here. Right, so now we're going to take it into the cutter again, but we're going to be scoring. We're not cutting for the minute. And we're going to take it up to three and one quarter inch. And I want to come down to, let's see, uh, the first score line here. Okay, so if you if you look at this line here. So we're just going to be scoring down to there and then we're going to go, we're going to take it down, lift our track up, take it down and come up, keeping still at the three and a quarter. But we're going to come up, scoring up towards this score, first score line. So it's the first score line down and, and the score line up. OK, so first score line up, first score line down. Okay, so we're at the three and a quarter. We're going to come down slowly to that first score line, go back up so that it's a, a nice deep finish. We're going to lift up the track and we're going to bring it down to the end and we're going to go up slowly to that first score line and then we're going to come back down again. Okay. So this middle bit here, in, in effect, has got no score lines on it at all. I don't want no score lines on it because I want to I want be podium-like, not baby block-like, okay? So we'll do it again on the next one. So we've got the short side at the top. And we're going to take it in to three and a quarter. And we're going to go up and come down with our scoring tool to the first line back up and then we're going to lift our track up and we're going to come up from the bottom to the first score line okay there 
we go. Okay, then we're going to, let's just make sure you can see that. There, okay. We're going to turn it around, okay. So we've got um, the short side this way and this way. And we're going to be coming down. So we're going to be coming down. Oh, might be better for me to bring it up here. Let's get my tweezers and you might be able to see it a bit better. We want to take this bit off, okay? This bit. So we're gonna we're gonna go in and take this bit off. But before we go in and take this bit off, I forgot, we're going to be cutting along here. Okay, so along here and along here. So what we're going to do is, with this bit on to the right hand side, the small bit there, we're going to take it in to four and a half inches, okay? And now we're going to be doing the same as we did with the scoring, but we're going to be cutting so to the first score line. So I'm going to be, the easiest bit for me was to bring my blade down to that first score line there. And I'm going to cut up. Okay, so I'm going to lift the track and I'm going to come down. And this is the first score line again from the from the bottom, but I'm going to go to the score line here, and I'm going to come down so that I don't end up cutting too far. I think it's easier that way. Okay, so should we do that again with the second one? This is what we're going to end up with. Yeah. So let's take it into the second one again. So we, again, we go to four and a half inches, the short side, four and a half inches. We're going to take our blade, we're going to lift our track up, and we're going to go down to the first score line here. I'm going to cut up. We're going to lift our blade up, still in the same place, four and a half inches. And we're going to come down to the last score line, which is the first upwards from the bottom and we're going to cut down okay that makes sense and you're going to have these two flaps here now we want to cut these flaps off but we also want to make flaps here okay so this is how we're going to be doing it take it into our trimmer and we're going to marry up on that two inch score line and we're going to come we're going to take our blade, let me get my little pincers again, and we're going to come straight down there where it chops that off, but we're also going to continue down to here. So we're going to continue down to, there's one score line, two score lines. So we're going to come down two score lines. We're not going to come across, we're just going to come down. Okay, so let's take that in. So we're going to come down. With our cutter to that second score line okay and that's going to take that bit away so the bit that you're going to have taken away that's going to have the score line in we don't want that we can throw that that then leaves our flap okay so it's a nice straight continuous edge we could have done it um down to here and then trimmed with scissors but it's a nice clean straight continuous line so then we're going to take this one again we're going to come over to the six inch here so we're going to make sure that the score line marries up with the track line here yeah and we're going to be taking it down to the second score line again. So you could, in effect, move your cutter. It's more or less three and a quarter down, to be fair. Okay, I'm going to go up. And that, we're taking that away. Okay, so we've got those two there. So we'll do that again for our second one. I'm going to bring that back in. Okay, so we've got our bit here. We want to trim these ones off and we want to continue down to the next score line to make our flap. So if we take that into the two inches again, that marries up that score line with the track. We're going to bring down our trimming blade, 
that will be three and a quarters on this side here but you've also got a little mark in either side to take you where you need and we're just going to go straight up and that's going to pull out that bit that we're going to just throw away unless you want to keep it and do some punching with it it's up to you and we're going to get that nice flat with the continuation of the cut there and we're going to do exactly the same so i think it's easier for me to bring that down to three and a quarter which is that score line and trim up okay we're going to throw i'm going to throw these ones away because i don't want them to get confused i'm easily confused so that's our cutting apart from i've already pre cut all the bits that you need just find a place for my trimmer and bring my chair in sorry for the noise i have this my big chair because uh, my cat has just made himself cozy on my little chair okay so we've got the very vanilla i'm going to bring in the color that i need i've already cut and scored those so you'll see exactly the same cut and scored okay so i'm just gonna move that now to the side and i'm going to be working with the early espresso so first of all i want to fold the long end and burnish it firmly it has to be firmly for it for it to stand properly so i'm going to bring in my second one and i'm going to do the same i'm going to fold that up and i'm going to firmly i've moved that down let me just make sure that that's still in in focus for you yeah okay now we're going to bring the top one down and we're going to do the same we're going to burnish it firmly bring the second one in burnish it firmly and then we're going to have the flaps okay so then we're going to do the same with that burnish Move that along and burnish. This absolutely makes a fabulous, fabulous wow card. So I, um, on a Sunday, um, my upline that holds in our team page, like a blind stamping challenge for us all. And it was my turn to host it. So I decided to do a, like a baby block card and um, there were some beautiful cards made. It's all different. We all use different. I did use, I'll show you at the end actually, I did use the gnome set for my original one. And I really loved this. And I thought, you know, I'm going to do my Facebook Live for my customers. Um, and I decided to just change it up a little bit. And um, I'll show you. Yeah, I've just made the two. Yeah, it will be on my blog anyway. I'll show both of them on my blog. And there'll be all measurements on there. So uh, there's no need to write down your bits and pieces. You can print off the measurements and work along with the video as you wish. Okay, so now I want to put my box card together, my podium card. So I'm going to lay this one onto this one. and But I'm not going to go right close to the score line of the left side or on top of it because it won't fold, fold properly. So just be slightly away from the score line. Okay, so I'm going to use my stamp and seal. A 
light touch. This is super strong. It takes up the cardstock if, you, if you're too heavy handed. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to double dutch it. I'm going to add some glue because I really want it to be um, quite firmly stuck. But I want to have wiggle room. So I'm just going to tiny piece of glue along there. And that helps me with the wiggle room. So there's a great tip there for you. Let's lay that on there. And push that little bit in there. Push it in the top. There we go. And I'm going to just firmly push that down with my bone folder. Okay, so can you see where we're going here? This folds flat. It folds flat into a card. Now, I'm going to turn it over and just show you where the join is. I want a continuation, a nice clean continuation round and that won't be it so that will be my back this bit here i'm going to turn it over and you're going to see this was the bit that was laid at the bottom so it's a continuation a nice continuation over okay so then we're just going to pull those ones down and fold those ones over to there okay I'm going to put tape on there. Again, I'm going to do exactly the same as I just did. Double dutching. Okay. Lay that flat. Okay. Firming that. A bit there, a bit there. A bit there. There we go. If you would like to purchase any of the items that I've used today, there are links just below the video that will take you straight to my online shop. And I would love to be your demonstrator if you if you wanted to purchase the stuff to make to make these, I would appreciate your purchase. There we go. Be sure to use the um, the monthly hostess code it changes every month on my blog you'll find it on my blog to get a three gift from me as a thank you for your custom so i really appreciate the sales now i'm just going to tidy that bit up a little bit because i wasn't careful when i put it together i was a little bit out. So we can just trim that because it will annoy me. And then push that bit off. There we go. So that's the base of our card. So that'd be your, like your card blank, so to speak. And it will stand up like that. And then obviously it folds flat to go into an A5 envelope. Right, let's get decorating. The fun bit begins. So I'm going to bring, pop those over there, bring those in. Okay. So I'm going to use this one here. If I can get them off my Thing. They're so sticky. <laughs> That's it. 
so, so sticky so they don't fall off the block. Okay. So that one's going to go on there. Let's bring in. I think we'll just layer up the ones that I need. This is a lovely font. I'm going to put it on here, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I'll put it on here. I'm just going to make sure that's straight if I lay that on there. straight enough to me I think if I use the small one that's the acorn there pine cone so it's that one that one that one we're going to use this one it fits on there and we're going to use this one on the back, season's greetings on the back. Let's do that by it. Oh, I can hear, <laughs> I can hear my cat having a little snooze. His little snoring. There we go. Just fecking about with a grip with a that'll do. That will do. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my sentiment first. Try and get it as central as I can, making sure it's all inked up, keeping that straight on the grid paper. Now I'm sitting down stamping, I'm normally a stand up stamper. So let's see where it's all going, that will do fine, that's lovely, I love that. And uh, while we're here, I might as well just stamp the greeting on the back side while well, we've got the pad open making sure that's straight again on the grid paper fabulous okay and put that one to one side going to get rid of this ink pad because i'm going to put my arm in there now we're going to bring in here, let's bring in a bit of scratch paper that I did have ready, so I don't mess up the, there we go, me postal certificate. <laughs> okay, so now, just going to Really and truly, I should have did the brown branching last, really. But never mind. So that was Early Espresso. And this is Old Olive Stamp and Write Marker. You can see I've used it a lot. It's going to be furry. Just do it um on the edge you just need to be on the edge of your pen otherwise you'll end up with a chimney brush style pen just do it lightly when you need a light touch i hope you can't see all my hair when i'm leaning forward sorry if you can Just 
want to add a little bit of an extra down to here but i'll be stamping off anyway so you may or may not see that bit but we never know and then i'm going to bring in the mossy meadow and i'm just going to do a little bit here and a little bit there and it doesn't matter which way you do it just gives it a little bit more dimension okay so what we're going to do is we're going to oh i can see a little bit of a gap put that dark one there oh, that'd be funny could be a little bit more there okay you might think oh it's dried so what we do you may or may not know is we'll huff on it so we oh i can see another bit look isn't that funny how you think, oh, you've done it all, and then you just go to huff and puff on it. Like the three little pigs. You're going to huff on it. <sighs> on the stamp, and you'll see it's gone all wet again. And I don't care that I'm going over the wording. That is absolutely fine by me. I'm just going to do it at an angle, and I'm going to be having half the stamp off and half the stamp on. Okay, and just press it down. Lovely. Then I'm going to huff again. And I'm going to use what's called second generation at the bottom there. There you go. Lovely. It's absolutely lovely. Going to mark it all up again. This is quicker if you did it this way. did the light green first and then you go over with your bits of little bits here and there then your early espresso just go down the bit so there's two ways of doing it. So I've showed you both ways now. Okay. I'm just going to huff. And I don't want to go over here. I just want to go here. So I'm just going to turn that round slightly like that. And we're just going to push that there. There we go. Voila. Absolutely perfect. So I'm just going to bring my chamois in. I've cut my chamois down. My chamois is now white because I, I regularly um, stick it in bleach. Just so it don't get smelly. And it still works perfectly. It's just not mauve anymore. There we go. Lovely. And I keep it in. We do sell these empty boxes that I've got it in. So this is the half wood mount and then I'll bring this along look this is where I keep them when I do my video so I just get the blocks out that I want to and that's the full stamp set case as well so we do sell those great for storage okay so I'm going to put that to one side um, I'm going to bring oh I forgot I want to do that bit so I have to bring it out again never mind never mind Let's have a look. Okay. Quickly do that. There we go. A little bit here, a little bit there. A little bit here and a little bit there. I'm rushing now, so I've gone over that little bit, but I probably won't see that. Okay. Bring that one in that we've got, because that's for our back, but I still like to pretty it up, don't we? Okay, puffy puffy. P 
perfect. Perfect, let's put that to one side. These are also great for if you get ink on your hand, you can just rub your hand in it. But I'm quite. <laughs> I've got words on my thumb as well now. I've got Susan's greetings inked up on my thumb. I think that's because I picked it up. I don't know if you're a crafter like me. I get things everywhere at times. Sometimes I don't get them in a mess at all. And then other times I think, oh, where's all that come from? Okay, so. I'm trying to work out. Did I use... The smaller one for the sides or did I just use that let's have a look no, I possibly use that okay so we're gonna bring this one back in I'm gonna do that Bring the Espresso pad in. Now you could, in effect, use um, your pen. I'm going to ink up and I'm going to stamp off and then stamp again so you get a lighter shade. Okay, so I'm going to do that. did that one did I let's go over that just a little bit that's it that will do I'm not fast I'm not too fast it's a wow card so I'm sure the recipient wouldn't notice too much This time I'm just going to use the old olive. I'm not going to use the brown. And I'm going to do a second generation with this as well. Because I want it lighter. So I'm going to stamp off on my scratch paper. And then I'm going to stamp on there I'm not going to huff on it this time because I don't want it to be so dark and I'm going to stamp on there there you go that's it Sorry about the noise, but I'm trying to be good and clean as I go along. <laughs> okay, so let's plug in my heat gun. To bring in my embossing powder, it's going to use gold. And before I do that, I'm going to wipe my embossing buddy over where I stamp because I don't want the the gold embossing powder to adhere to the places I don't want it. Okay, so I'm, oh, I'm wobbling the table, so I do apologise. Do that in readiness for that. 
just going to pop those two over there. One there. And one there out the way. Okay, pop the lid off. Then to bring in my Versamark, tap gently because it's a sponge. I'm not going to press too hard. I don't want it to come um, ink up that around the edges. You can see it's got like a talcum powdery stuff in there because look at my hands now. So we're just going to um, randomly stamp. We're going to be stamping off the edges as well. Let's make it look like it should. There we go. Going to use throw that over. You can see that now it's adhering to where I stamped. Okay, I'm just going to put that to one side and I think I'll do these two while I'm at it. Gently put them down. You can't actually see for the minute where I've stamped. To one side, let's use my little tweezers because I can't see where I've stamped basically, and I don't want to get my finger in there and muck it all up. Tapping the excess off that we don't want. There you go. Throw that away. Well, not throw it away, literally just put it to one side because I don't want to use that now. And I'm going to bring in my heat gun. So excuse the noise, but just in case you're new to stamping and such. Um, I'm just going to show you how I emboss. So I do it from underneath so I can see then how it's taken and when it catches I just move along. See it's caught there and you can see the gold and I move along now to um, the other side. Don't be tempted to wring it around because it, it's not a hairdryer. Uh, how we do our hair you just need to keep it about an inch away once it's caught and then dark spots are turning gold then you move on to the next thing okay so I'm just going to bring in my big piece now and um it curls it around, but it's curling it in a way that's not going to worry me when I glue it down to the gold piece because it's it's actually going the right way as opposed to it will curl upwards and then be a little bit more difficult to attach to your next layer. There we go. Absolutely perfect. That's it. Pop that over there. I'm now going to get rid of my scratch paper because it's got like little bits and things on it. Um, let me just get a tissue and wipe away some of the powder that does inevitably get onto your surface. So I just want to get rid of that because for one, it makes me itchy skin, and for two, I don't want it all powdery on my on my lovely card. So we're now going to be 
doing this bit here and I'm going to show you a trick in a minute um, when I put that on there. Okay. So I'm just going to use a bit of this. I'm still learning not to go heavy handed. <laughs> Again, I want to just add a bit of glue too. Because this is curled up, you do want it to properly, properly stick to your gold piece without a problem. I don't want it peeling out. So make sure we've got an equal border all round. That's it. See, no curling now. No curling. Perfect. Pop that up there and bring these ones down. These ones haven't curled so much, so I'm just going to put one just across there. Just across there. There we go. If you're still with me, we're nearly done. Just lay that there. Lay that one there. Okay, push them to one side. Now I'm going to use this tailored tag punch. Oh, <laughs> I've been doing some retreat stuff with another sweet, and that's come from there. Got it stuck on there. Okay, so this I want to make some little tab side bits in there for my thread to go on so it doesn't pull it in um, and look yucky. So I'm just going to mark it. So if I put on my grid paper here, I want to mark where I want it to be. So I don't want it to come above and go over any of the wording. So I'm just going to mark it here. And I'm not bothered that it's a pen. I'm going to go along and mark it in the same line because that pen mark is going to come out in a minute. Because we're just going to do like a little you call that flag a little flag style and we're going to take this bit here that we've just marked is going to go right in the middle there where that tip is so if you pull it in there like that you can see that so I'm gonna just snip that bit off so we've made a little indent and we're gonna do the same the other side There we go. Bring in our twine thing. I don't know if you call this twine. It's not wire. Um, but it's not um, as flimsy as twine. I'm going to wrap it around once and, and then again just take it in to make a bow. Pull it tightly. There we go. Just adds to that bit of glistening, glistening in the snow. Okay, so we're going to bring in our card blank. So before we do that, I'm just going to turn it over to the back side and I want to put my greeting on there. 
like that. So it's going to be equal border around there. That can just go on with my Tombow. Less is more with Tombow. So you don't get all sticky picky. Lay it on, move it along to where you want it. And hold it down just for a little while. That's it. There we go. Okay. Now you may or may not want to, at this stage, put this one on with dimensionals. Uh, that is entirely up to you because you have got this bit here. Um, maybe I might do for this, actually. Let's have a look. I'm going to cut the edge in so that otherwise we'll be here all day with these little ones. Okay. Pop that there. I always use these side bits. I don't throw anything away unless I have to. Okay. I want that one in the middle. the other ones down the side so just one there and one there that will do I love how easy that the back comes off sometimes if some other mates you you're there all day just trying to get the bits off. Okay, so we just want it to lay nicely on there. I'm going to fold that flat to do that. That's it. That's perfect. Now we're going to put the sides on. Yeah. Just going to do those with some Tombow. Again, we're going to just come in for this score line here. A little bit of wiggle room. Let me just check that that's looks like this. I should be standing up at this point, really doing this. side look how the colors pop against that early espresso it's such a rich rich lovely color okay i'm going to bring in my stag now and i want to pop him about there where the home is about there yeah okay so Going to use the big one for his body and some little tiddlers for his face and his bottom and his chest because he's puffing out that old chest there. Very majestic. We're nearly done. Okay, so I want to lay him just about there. And there you go. How gorgeous is that? 
such a beautiful, beautiful wow card to give your family. Or your best friend. It doesn't take too long. You could do several at a time. So there you go. And I promised to show you the one I did originally with um, just the score line down the middle there. So you went two, four, six. Uh, there's no place like gnome. And then I decorated. Again, these bits here have come from the same set as the stag. So the mistletoe there. And I've um, coloured in stamping blends and I've kept it flat it's not too much bit of sparkle with those a little bit of twine and these little things come from all the trimmings embellishments and I colour mine to whatever I want it to be but I wanted it to be the mistletoe so that's there anyway there you go I hope you will give it a try um, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video do subscribe if you want to see more from me and so that you get notified when I do some more videos. Um, and as I say, if there's anything that you want from the Stampin' Up! catalogue and you're in the UK, in the Netherlands, Germany, France, um, basically European demo, um, please do um, check below. There's links to my blog, my Facebook page, and my online shop and I would only be too happy to help you out with some Stampin' Up! products. So that's bye for me for now. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.